Good morning from Lake Kachuma. As you can see, I'm quite tired. We went to Eric's funeral last night and um, got to talking with everyone and just uh, didn't, didn't get out of there till pretty late. So I think we got here around 3 a.m. and um, it's about 8-ish or just after 8 so not much sleep but we're here and I've never been here before I don't really know what it looks like out there because I'm still in the tent let's get this day started here's some of the campground there's a road here and on the other side um, you have your day use area and then lake so that's just one side of the peninsula and the end, the far end, will be off this way, so the lake will come around, and then you can see lake over here. And looks like they're rehabbing this area, putting in some new oak trees. I absolutely love oak trees. I just, I love the way they look, how green they are. They produce acorns, and the bark is so interesting looking. Here we go. Breakfast. Gonna have some salmon and broccoli frittata. Now, I've not done this on the stove, so we will see how it goes. Uh, usually this will go into the oven and bake. So what I'm doing to kind of help this along is just cook up the salmon a little bit, kind of uh, searing the outers, and then I'll go ahead and throw everything in there. Since there's cheese in there that's going to add a lot of flavor sodium I just added some fresh cracked pepper and just a hint of uh, pink Himalayan salt David thank you you're welcome Delicious. Jason thank you let's give it a try <laughs> That's good. Oh man. <laughs> we are at Lake Kachuma and this is a county park. Look at all the campsites they have. We're actually here at 425 and it's a great big place. Lots of stuff to do. Oh, TP Island. Hmm. I wonder if they actually have some teepees there. Uh, fishing and uh, day use area down along the shore. Got the docks, the marina. Kind of getting a late start, got in late, woke up a little late, but uh, there's still plenty of daylight, lots to do. Uh, I actually think we're just going to head over to the Painted Caves. I mean, it's not a real cave, it's just kind of under this rock area. And they have it fenced off here. A couple of those. And there is this little opening, so let's see what we can see. There's nobody here to let us back there. I doubt they take many tours in there, though. There's nowhere to go, really. On the far right, and then in the far left corner, there's some paintings there. Really good pictures. Got that nice red color on there. There's white, black. Can't make out too much of what they actually are. Oh, one looks like a teepee. Well, look like that's it. More of a local spot. I mean, there's the road parked there and there's that cave closed off. There is a little trail here. You see David's on it. This is the trail going up. 
some ladies just came down they said it pretty much just goes to another turn off in the road so you can either access it from this one and hike down to the painted cave or where we parked and hike up to it but let's go up a little bit and see how this looks Ooh, steep. Very steep. Pretty steep, huh? Steep hill, yeah. So steep, almost vertical. Not vertigo, vertical. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> the girls that went down this way are in ones in sandals um, and the other ones in like a nice kind of uh, dress shoe <laughs> so silly there's a bunch of these trees here now they're either bay leaf or laurel leaf um, I'm not sure but they're very fragrant very sweet smelling um, uh, to just this whole area just smells sweet and uh, it's coming from these. If you know what they are, let me know. These things are lovely. We're still in the canyon here where the painted rock was and on the map we found this cool feature. We call it the castle. So we're gonna head down this dirt road and check that out. It looks like somebody bought the property and they're rehabbing the structure that was already here. You can see they're adding up walls. Here's the original fireplace. It's beautiful, big windows. I bet that whole back wall will just be glass. Look at the steps down, those arches that way, and they frame the view out there just perfectly. So this was definitely a fireplace. There's the chimney, and you see the inside brick lining the walls and then the exterior feature. You guys, off in the distance, you can see Lake Kachuma. Right here, you can see the peninsula, the very same one that we're camping on. The way the castle is set on the hill, it's like at the end of one of these, these fingers or these ridges that come off the main mountain. And it just, it's built all around on both sides of it. And so you've got these big wide views. What's on the menu for tonight's dinner? Enchilada chicken soup. I got my shredded chicken, a couple of pouches of enchilada sauce. We got some cheddar cheese already grated. And in here I did a homemade stock. Right now I'm just boiling up some bell peppers for an extra bite and some mushrooms in there for some extra flavor. So we got the chicken in there now, the sauce. That's nice and boiled up. Let's go ahead and throw in some cheddar cheese. Oh yeah, we're doing way more than that. Let's get to the toppings. We got some Chobani Greek yogurt. In place of sour cream, this stuff is much richer, thicker, and packed with protein. I think I'm going to go with two globs on there and do a little cilantro let's not forget the green onion i mean who eats enchiladas without olives go ahead and throw some of those on there this is 
pork skins just uh, shredded up so we got a nice little crunch on top of there and there you go Just down here by the lake watching the sun come up and I just wanted to talk about the funeral just a little bit um, it's really nice of course to see all of Eric's family there and all his friends there and a full house you know but mostly when uh, his family member got up to speak about him and uh, you know, it was good to hear the stories and uh, one thing he said though towards the end of his speech was how Eric wanted for nothing and it's true he, he was always content uh, and he was always happy and I don't know, something we can all kind of learn from I guess when someone passes and I've had lots of people pass in my life uh, it's always a, a reminder that we need to seize the day and we need to move on and we need to enjoy who we have in our lives at this moment and what we have. Appreciate it, enjoy it. And another thing, uh, he asked for everybody to stand and give applause. So we all clapped. And while clapping, just made me want to clap more thinking about the honor that we were giving uh, to Eric and it felt really good. I'd never seen that at a funeral service before um, You know, it's like The concert or the group or the artist or the preacher that you go see and and uh, They really come across to you in their music or in their in their speech or their sermon and um, You know you applaud them and it's not just you, it's the whole audience and and that, that energy given back, it just, it feels good. So applauding and giving honor to him at the end of that speech was, uh, it's pretty intense. It felt really good and I, I would like that done at my funeral. And I think we should do that to everybody at their funerals. So, just wanted to thank the family for letting us be there and uh, be a part of it and, um, you know, give honor to Eric.